When talking about fascia and about membranes, we have to be aware that this kind of tissue has two main functions which are actually opposite to each other. So on one side, the fascial system supports a certain amount of stability. It actually rules the shape of the body, otherwise we would look different every day. And on the other side, so it is a, it's a sort of a medium of stabilization of the body. On the other side, he has a very, very strong dynamic character and it actually guarantees for the movement of the body. So these two opposite functions of the fascial and membrane system are responsible for the fact that there is also a risk of imbalance that one side of the function is more dominant than the other functional aspect of this system. And the body always tends to do too much of the good. So for example, if we make the same motion all the time, the same motion, the same motion, the fascial system will help the muscle and will say, okay, I build more fibrous tissue around the muscle and separating the muscle in its smaller units to help that muscle, to make it stronger, to make it more functional. And we all know up to a certain degree this works very well, but if that's happening too much, the body uses its functional capacity and the muscle actually doesn't have enough fluid exchange and not enough support from oxygenated blood. So when we are actually treating this kind of tissue, when we're treating fascia and membrane, we always have to be aware that the fascial system itself, the membrane system itself, is not our main goal. We see the role of this tissue as a mediation between all the different subsystems of the body. So whether we have the vessels, the arteries, the veins, whether we have the nerves, whether we have the organs, the fascial system provides a system of cavities, of bags into bags into bags, all the way down to the level of the cell. And at the same time, it offers transitional passages for all the longitudinal connections which are so important for the different fluid systems of the body. We all know that the fascia builds envelopes about everything. We have mentioned that before, around organs, around nerves, around vessels, around bones even, around the brain, around the spinal cord. That's all sort of fascia and membrane. But we know that if we would have to treat all these different types, we would probably spend the rest of our life just with one client. So what we need to do is we have to be very, very specific. We have to make very clear, distinctive choices in our evaluation of the individual organism to find those key areas which we may treat most successfully. There are two basic concepts that may help us beyond the theory, the more or less simple theory of joints, of flexion and extension around the musculoskeletal systems. And those two aspects are, we are aware that the cavities of the body are a sort of a very complex hydrostatic system. There are pressure differences between those cavities and those pressure differences play an important role for that what we call the column of organs that supports the curvatures of the spine and the curvatures of the back from the front. When we look at that on the level of the pelvis, we see that from the back there is a sort of a solid bony construction that supports that pelvic basket. But from the front it's open. And now it looks that it's just the belly of the pelvis, but the fact is we have several subcavities like the large peritoneal cavity, then with many organs inside, then the retroperitoneal cavity, giving space for the psoas, some other components, but mainly for the psoas and the kidneys, and the subperitoneal cavity, offering space for the bladder and in the male organism, the prostate, or in the female organism, actually the uterus. 
So we have on the level of the pelvis, we have three subcavities which support the column of organs and they contribute to the way how, for example, this curvature of coccyx and sacrum meet the counter curvature of the low doses of the lumbar spine. Now, what we have to be aware of is that the most successful areas to treat with our approach are those areas where the container construction of the body meets the contents. The container is the musc musculoskeletal system, but it's not only a container. It's a system of motion, of movement, of orientation, and of sensuous perception. So it's a very important aspect, the container. But then we have the contents, which is mainly the central nervous system, all the nerves, the vessels, and especially the organs. So if we want to be successful in giving a very economical approach in our work, we have to see where the container construction, the musculoskeletal system, meets the contents via the fascial and the membrane system. And those are especially the areas of transition, for example, where one curvature meets the other curvature and the counter curvature. So all the way from the sacrum, through the lumbars, through the thoracic spine, the neck and the head, seen from the side. But seen from the front, the interesting areas will be those areas where one cavity meets the next cavity. So the, where the subperitoneal, for example, meets the peritoneal and where the peritoneal meets the thoracic area with the diaphragm as a separating muscle in between. And finally, where the thoracic area meets the neck. So in a way, the neck does not start here. The neck starts and the throat starts way behind the sternum. And then finally, we have also to look at the transitional area between the neck and the cranium as one of the most important.